I, what I wanted to do was to try to talk about the sort of deflate gate controversy, but go back to the data. So I want to get out of the way that I actually am not a Patriots fan. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. The Patriots broke my heart and, uh, when, they, when they won the Super Bowl in 2005. I just want one Super Bowl victory by the Eagles before I die. Has anyone had a, as an instance with your measurement project where the first time you tried to collect data, it didn't quite work out? Like, did anyone have to repeat their data collection? Um, did anyone have a data collection exercise where it was a total disaster and almost a waste of time? But you learned how to do it right the next time. Here's a video from a thing called the Monday Morning Quarterback. Let's hope the audio works. So, this is from a couple years ago. They'll bring, you, they'll bring in 12 balls normally. Yeah. And those are classified as game balls. We have to pressure them. Make sure they're between meat regulations. It's 12 and a half to 13 and a half pounds. So this is a video from something called the Monday Morning Quarterback website um, for Sports Illustrated, just showing how they prepare the balls. Did they write anything down? Did they write down any numbers? Did they take the temperature? Did they have any sort of experimental procedure? Did they just say 12 and a half, close enough, OK? With a sensor that sort of costs 15 bucks and is plus or minus 0.2 PSI accuracy, all right? So the regulations say that the balls need to be between 12 and a half and 13 and a half PSI. The Colts set theirs to 13. The Patriots set theirs to 12 and a half. So the sequence of events is in a locker room that was about 71 degrees, the Patriots' balls were checked to be 12 and a half PSI by that sort of sloppy procedure, not writing numbers down, not taking the temperature, but let's just call it 71 degrees in the locker room. They go to the field. It's colder. They have a long time to equilibrate. What happens to the pressure when you go from warmer to colder? It drops, right? And we'll get to that ideal gas law. And then the balls were brought back in at halftime. Halftime lasts 13 and a half minutes. The balls warmed up. So, um, so what I want you to do is actually just do the math for me. So just, just, just compute these numbers, all right? All right, so the Patriots balls should have, the prediction from the ideal gas law, if you, once you get to steady state, is 11.3. Got it? OK, how about the Colts balls? So the second ball, we made 13 PSI. What do you get? It's going to be 11.8. Good, 11.8, OK? And so, uh, so that's what the Colts balls should be. So let's go back to the story. The Colts intercepted a ball uh, in the first half. It, it didn't feel, it felt different. It felt different, didn't feel right. There was this rumor maybe the Patriots were doing something to the balls. So they measured it on the sidelines. When they measured the Patriots ball on the sidelines with one of the gauges, guess what they measured? We can look up the, they measured 11.3, OK? Now, instead of thinking ideal gas law, they thought cheating. And everything went downhill from there. So they decided to do this sort of impromptu measurement procedure at halftime. The average of all the numbers from one gauge, the average from the numbers in the other gauge, we get 11.11, 11.49. Let's take the average of those two numbers. If we take the average of all 22 measurements, we get 11.30 PSI. So the Pats balls started at 12 and a half, and they decreased by 1.2 PSI. All right? Now, the Colts balls, they started at 13. They only measured four Colts balls. And that's the hypothesis that they ran out of time, because half time's only 13 and a half measurements. 13 and a half minutes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's the half a measurement? But if you take the average of the four, of, of the four balls, two readings each, of the Colts balls, you get 12.53, all right? Now, so 13, 12.53, the Colts balls decreased by 0.47 PSI. The Patriots balls decreased by 1.2 PSI. What's going on? Something's up. The Colts didn't tamper with their footballs. So if the Colts are a control, which is something we can get back to discussing, something happened to the Patriots balls, right? So something's wrong. So if you were the NFL and you didn't know any physics, would you be suspicious? So the balls had to be started at 12 and a half for the Patriots, and then they fell to 11.3. The Colts started at 13, and they fell to 12.5. And it's this difference, the difference of the differences, is the sort of the incriminating thing against the Patriots. How did this happen? All right? So 
Average Pat's measured ball pressure, 11.30. Predict difference. What's 11.302 minus 11.30? What's that? 0 0.02 PSI. Th then you're like, you know, you breathe on the football, you know, you're going to change that that much. All right? So uh, how about the Colts? So the Colts, we're going to change 12 and a half to 13. This is just what we did before. Um, and uh, we're going to wind it with 11.8. But we measured, the measurements were 12.5. So the difference is going to be 0.73 PSI. So, so do you, everybody following with me? So the Pats balls match the prediction. The Colts balls are the ones that don't. And the question is why? All right. So summary. Patriots balls match the ideal gas law prediction. The agreement is well within the measurement, actually, the gauges and the other unknowns. There are a lot of unknowns here. The calibration of the gauge, which gauge, the temperature in the locker room, they were checked. The, temp you know, the, the various set of temperatures, there's, you know, nothing is written down. Uh, timing is a whole other discussion here. But you know, if I had to stake my reputation and my career on it, the Patriots balls match the ideal gas law prediction. And I don't know why people can't get that. All right. Instead of asking why the Pats balls were too low, the question is why were the Colts balls too high? <laughs> OK. You get it? OK. And uh, so let's do some examples. All right. So the coldest NFL game on record, anybody? Any guesses? What, what city has the coldest football games? Lambeau Field. Good, good. Um, the, uh, um, so I'll give you some examples, right? So, the January, so here we had 71 minus 48.1.17 or 1.2 PSI drop. Pat's Ravens, it was a 2.60 PSI drop. If this is such a big deal, why didn't anybody notice that the balls were this, that they were? All right, so uh, that was the drop before. Coldest NFL game on record. Any guesses what the temperature was? Minus 13 degrees in Green Bay. So we can say it's an 84 degree difference, 84 times 0.05. 4.28 PSI drop. So if, if you looked at what would the pressure be measured on the field for the Colts, 11.3 uh, PSI. A week before, 9.9 .9 PSI with the Ravens. Coldest NFL game on record, 8.2 PSI. In all that time, in the whole history of football, no one ever connected this. No one ever, you know, like, uh, it never came up. You know, no one realized. Let's take the measurements and plot them against the data, that curve I made. So those are the Patriots measurements. You take the average, you get right at the prediction. How about the Colts? So we do the same prediction of what would happen for the Colts starting pressure, and we plot their measurements against the trend line, the, the, the prediction, and there's this big gap. And so something's different about the Colts balls. And that's the zooming in on it. All right, so let's talk about time. So the, the critical thing is, how did the balls warm up over halftime? And so Exponent published several experiments but what they did was they had um, four different balls. So a dry ball that started at 13 PSI, a wet ball that started at 13 PSI, a dry 12 and a half, and a wet 12 and a half. And they basically the top two are Colts balls, the bottom two are Patriots balls. And this is the simulation of bringing it back to halftime, and it slowly warms up. So the balls slowly warm. You're measuring a transient phenomena. And so the steady state analysis we just did in some ways, it's not accurate when things are changing. And so that's why time is so critical. When did the measurements happen? How quickly did they happen? So just the simple version, and this is what's called the AEI, I call the AEI hypothesis, is that the Patriots balls were measured at the start of halftime, and the Colts balls were measured at the end of halftime. And especially if they had to refill the balls and get them just right. And one thing that I've realized from trying to do these experiments, measuring the balls is pretty quick. Refilling them is a pain in the neck. And, and this is really the essence of the story. So this difference of differences uh, is that it's explained by time. It's nearly completely explained by time. And the rest of the difference is explained by wetness. By wetting the ball, you get up to a 3% increase in volume. So if the volume goes up 3% due to wetness, what happens to the pressure? It's going to go down 3%. 3% is a big deal in this problem, because we're quibbling about very tiny levels of percentages. Now, it was raining that day. It was cold. The water on the ground was really cold. The Patriots had the ball for a sustained drive at the end of the half. So the Patriots balls, at least most of them, were very wet. The Colts balls were, were drier. They weren't being used at the end of half, and they were kept in a trash bag. They were kept dry. The Patriots didn't have their balls in a, in a plastic trash bag. So um, the hypothesis is that the Patriots balls were a lot wetter. So um, this, this here, this section of data, 
This is from time, so they did an experiment where they filled them, they brought them out to the field for four hours, so that's 240 minutes, and then 13 and a half minutes for half time. This graph here is part of a larger, this is the full data from this experiment. They had the balls, you know, brought to the, they were in the locker room, they were brought to the field, they cooled down, and then they warmed back up. So what do, you, what do you know about the wet footballs versus the dry footballs? So just compare, like, say, the red and the orange line. What, what is, so wet football has what pressure relative to dry? Lower, right? What else? So what else do you see different about the orange curve and the red curve? So in terms of the response time, who said that? Slower, right? So, the, so wet footballs warm more slowly than, than dry footballs. Can everybody say that for me? Wet footballs warm more slowly than dry footballs? OK, remember that, all right? And intuitively, it makes a lot of sense, right? So um, the simple explanation is the Pats balls are measured at the start of halftime while the Colts balls are measured at the end of halftime after warming up. And the lower PSI levels are further explained by the wetness, volume increase, and wind, evaporative cooling on the balls, also the effect of the balls being kept in a bag for a long time before being measured. All right, so, so just a quick uh, check on, uh, before I go into the transient stuff. And uh, gosh, all right. So um, there's an appeal going on, and the NFL had its chance to restate its case for the appeal. And you go into the text of the appeal. You know, 11 of the full New England footballs were tested at halftime. All were below the prescribed air pressure ranges measured in each of the two gauges. Four of the Indianapolis footballs were tested at halftime as well, and all were within the pre prescribed air pressure range in at least one of the two gauges. So this is what the NFL is describing as the crime. It's really kind of crazy because the balls had to be below 12 and a half because of the ideal gas law. And the Colts balls started half a PSI higher. So to say that the Colts balls were in range and the Patriots balls weren't for this temperature difference is sort of crazy. All right? So, so they, they still don't know it. All right. One thing that the NFL has not done is quantify exactly what the crime is, how much air was removed. How much air do you think the Patriots actually removed. Like, does anyone think that deflation actually happened? If you work it through, it's basically 0.1 to 0.2 PSI. And if we take, for example, 0.1 and we divide it by 27.2, the absolute pressure, 0.0030, okay, okay, let's just call it zero, call it four, okay? So, the accusation is that the Patriots removed 0.4% of the air, so less than one part in 100. So remember we said that the wet balls warm up more slowly than dry footballs, all right? And you can see that in this data. Well, if you jump to the next part of the Wells report, figure 24, they do this transient analysis between figures 24 and 28, and then just based on my sincere in inspection of this is that there are flaws, there are mistakes, there are shortcomings. It doesn't add up. And so here, you have, what they did is they made these curves for a single dry ball, a single wet ball, a single dry ball, a single wet ball. And what do you notice about those transients? Like, can you see that the wet and the dry are sort of parallel to one another? So what we said before, that the wet curve should be more slow, that went away. So basically, they made the curve flatter. They used a shorter temperature range. So, um, and if we compare, so there's two things I want you to know, and I'm, and I'm going to finish now because I'm out of time, is that um, the, uh, these curves are central to the case. And there are two big problems with them. Uh, well, three. I don't know where the hell the numbers are from, so they just sort of don't give you any backup, really. But the, the time constants for the wet and the dry are the same. And the coefficient out front is much too small. And what that means is instead of like having 40, 71 degrees to 48 degrees, it, they're the equivalent of like 65 degrees to 48 degrees or 64 degrees. And so it sort of looks like, so basically the transient analysis is a bit messed up. The conclusion is that based on my extensive study, I, I really am convinced that there's no deflation. Uh, and that's because the best case is that the for the transient analysis to hold, it's a minuscule reduction in pressure, which is easily, easily, easily explained by the difference in wetness of the balls. The second thing is that the transient analysis doesn't make any sense because those curves should be getting further apart from one another. Um, so there are flaws in the methodology in the report, um, specifically in figures 24, 26, the related analysis. And I really think that the NFL should drop its appeal because the, there are technical failures in the, in the exponent report. 
An exponent should tell us more about the data and procedures they use to make these graphs. And if, uh, if uh, I, and I think that transient analysis needs more scrutiny so we can understand what actually it means. But there's about three or four things that are just seriously puzzling or wrong with that analysis. And even if you accept the best case, you're talking about 0.3 to 0.7 percent reduction in the air. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, good luck with your Go Forth and Measure projects.